now that we have established uh, a separation theorem um, between a point and a set, we can now uh, re almost repeat the process of which we had for strong separation and go to the separation of two convex sets. Um, but I want to first follow up on a comment I gave you on why the theorem which we just proved in the last video is useless um, in the case, or almost useless, in the case that the interior, interior of the point, uh, the interior of the set C is empty. So assume that you have a set C which is a one-dimensional line segment, here, like this, in a two-dimensional plane. Uh, obviously you see the interior, interior is empty because you cannot uh, fit a two-dimensional ball into this line segment. Um, what can now happen is, um, since the interior is empty, you can, po you, can, you can choose any point x because this will not be, uh, the point x will not be in the in interior. So you can choose a point x, for example, like here, um, so that you can find like a separating hyperplane like this, and this will be useful. But the theorem also allows you to choose the point here, which will lead to a problem because a point x here um, can only allow the, the hyperplane which contains both the set C and the set x. And this is a problem because usually this hyperplane is not useful. It does not really separate anything. It just um, satisfies this infimum uh, thing with equality for all elements in the set C. So all the elements in the set C have the same inner product with this um, um, with this normal vector a, uh, as has the, the the vector x. So this is not really useful. And in the theorem where we establish the separation between two convex sets, we will see how to exclude this. And here we are really using that the interior of this. Of, of the set where we apply this theor uh, theorem to, uh, to which we apply this theorem, the set which we, to which we apply this theorem, has non-empty interior. And we will see how that goes. And we will also see which condition we add to our, or which um, conclusion, actually, we add to our theorem um, in order to, uh, so, so that we can see that um, the case with non-empty interior excludes this degenerate thing where, where like both the set C and the vector A, uh, both the set C and the vector X are contained in the same like separating in, in quotation marks uh, hyperplane, which is just not separating at all. Okay, so after this rambling, now let's come to our theorem formulation. So now we have two sets, C1, C2, subset of our usual finite dimensional inner product space H, um, B non-empty and convex, such that. Um, first of all, um, we this time want that, just for simplicity, that they have non-empty, um, uh, sorry, they have empty intersection, so they have no points in common. And, as I pointed out, we want the interior of C1 minus C2 to be non-empty. So intersection, uh, sorry, intersection of course, as I said, I think should be empty and the interior of the Minkowski difference should be non-empty. Okay, so um, just a reminder here, for example, um, setting C1 um, with um, um, the, the condition, for example, that one of the sets has, has um, non-empty interior is enough for this. 
So for example, interior of C1 um, is non-empty is sufficient so that also this uh, C1 minus C2 has non-empty interior. Okay. Okay. So interior C1 um, so is sufficient. Okay. Let me check my... Yep, I have all our assumptions. So then there exists exists A in H such that norm of A is equal to 1 and now our separation um, property. So whenever we take A in the inner product with x1, uh, with y1, um, this should be greater or equal than A with y2, where y1 is in C1 and y2 is in C2. And we can also, uh, so instead of writing for all y1 in, in, in C1, y2 in C2, we can write supremum here for y2 in C2. So the largest possible value is still less or equal than the smallest possible value, so the infimum of this. But, uh, as I mentioned, we want to avoid this case for example, so if you have this point x here in, in this so-called relative interior, what you, what you would like to be the interior of this line segment, it's, this has a, has a name, relative interior. If you want to read more about this, I can recommend you the um, book Convex Analysis by Rockefeller, for example. Then you, you can read about this in great detail. Then, um, then the only vector A which, or the only, like, um, all the vectors A which satisfy this condition will contain both the set C and the set, uh, and the, uh, all the hyperplanes will contain both the set C and the vector X. So um, you have A1, A Y1 equals A Y2 for all Y1 and Y2. So this is not useful. So we want to have at least some points where these where this, uh, these inner products are different. And the way to formalize this is just to say <coughs> the supremum over this is greater than the infimum. And Rockefeller calls this proper separation. So this is the formulation of the theorem um, where we have this condition which we did not have in any of the previous um, separation theorems. Okay, so let's get to the proof then. Um, proof. Of course, you know that we want to apply the separation theorem to the set C1 minus C2, the separation, that is the separation theorem from the last video between point and set, and the point zero, just, just as we did for the, strict, uh, for the strong separation. Okay, so let's, uh, let's state that the set C1 minus C2, since C1 and C2 are convex, is also, is also convex. And C1, C2 is, as usual, the Minkowski difference. Um, so the difference of all C1 in C1 and C2 in C2. Okay. Or Y1 in C1 and Y2 in C2. Um, so the set is convex. And since we have um, uh, empty intersection of C1 and C2, we have 0 is not in C1 minus C2. Otherwise, um, if 0 were in C1 minus C2, then 0 would be the difference of an element in C1 and an element in C2. And this would be a common element to both um, sets. So, uh, obviously then, 
zero is not an element of the smaller subset, the interior of C1 minus C2. Okay, so now we have seen, well, we have, we have the, the point zero, which is not in the interior, we have the set C1 minus C2, which is convex, non-empty by, by non-emptiness of C1 and C2. And we have uh, that this set has non-empty interior, so it satisfies the requirement for our previous theorem. And the, set, uh, the, the point zero is not in the interior of C1 minus C2. So by the previous theorem, from the last video, we see that there exists a vector A in H such that the norm of A is equal to 1. This is this point here. And we had the infimum over Y in C1 minus C2 of AY is greater or equal to um, a zero. This is the point where we want, where we want, where which we want to separate from the set, and this inner product is zero. Okay, so let's go then to to uh, to, to the definition of the set C one minus C two. So zero is less or equal than the infimum, and now every element y can be written as a difference of y1 in c1 and y2 in c2. So y can be replaced by y1 minus y2. And now as we also saw in the strong separation theorem, we have a, a sum of um, two terms here, one of which only contains y1 and the other one only contains y2. So we can separate this and therefore we can also separate this infimum and can write, <coughs> sorry, y1 in c1 and the infimum a y1. And now we have the infimum of minus inner product of a and y2, which is minus the supremum of a y2. And this is exactly this property here. So when, when, you, when you put the supremum on the other side, then you get the supremum of this of a y2 is less or equal than the infimum of y1 and a y1. Okay, so this proves this property. Now we have to prove the second property. And we can do this, <coughs> sorry, um, by using the um, this uh, interior, the, the non-empty interior property. So the non-empty interior of C1 minus C2. And let's therefore fix an element y, uh, x bar, we can also call it y bar. So x bar in the interior of C1 minus C2. And what, what we then, then can do is um, uh, find an element, as we did in the lemma in the previous video. Um, we can take this vector a and just attach this to this point a, x bar. And if we scale this uh, with a small enough factor, then uh, the difference to x bar will still be so small that we are still in the, in the set c1 minus c2. So let's write this down. Um, we can also draw a picture here. So x bar is in the interior of c1 minus c2. c1 minus c2 therefore contains this ball around x bar and you can scale the vector a. So if, if the vector a would be this one, you can, uh, you can scale this vector by a factor of epsilon so that epsilon times a is still contained in, in this ball around, around x bar which is contained in c1 minus c2. So x bar plus 
epsilon a, and a is the vector which we have constructed here, is in C1 minus C2 for epsilon small enough. So there exists a small epsilon such that this vector is, is contained in C1 minus C2. You could explicitly compute this once you know the radius of this ball, and then you take epsilon smaller than the radius because A has norm 1. Okay. Then, therefore, what can we now say about this quantity here? So this quantity here is the supremum of... So we wanted to, to bring this infimum to the other side and, and, and show that the difference is greater than 0. So the supremum of uh, y1 in c1 of a y1 minus the infimum over y2 in c2 a y2. Okay, what can we say about this quantity? Well, we can go back from what we, ha what we have done here back to c1 minus c2 because this is where we have our elements here. So this is um, just, just going back and just um, noting that um, minus infimum of something is infimum of minus the same thing. So you can put this minus inside the infimum, but then you have to switch infimum to supremum. And then this matches exactly with, with the supremum on the other side. So this is the supremum over y1 in c1, y2 in c2. Okay. And of a y1 minus y2. Okay, and since y1 and y2, um, you have the difference here, the dif all, the, all the differences between elements in c1 and c2, this is clearly the, um, the Minkowski difference, c1 minus c2. So y in this Minkowski difference and then the inner product of a y. And now you have an element in this Minkowski difference here namely um, uh, x bar plus epsilon a. And the supremum of, the, of all the elements in the Minkowski difference is clearly uh, greater or equal than uh, one special element which, which you have, namely a and x, x bar plus epsilon a. And now you can calculate this, so you can use the linearity of the inner product to get, well, a in a product with x bar plus epsilon a in a product with itself. So plus epsilon and the inner product of an element with itself is the norm squared. All right, now you have a in the inner product with x bar and you have this epsilon times norm of a squared here and x bar is an, in the interior of c1 minus c2 so it's clearly also in c1 minus c2 itself. So, um, now this thing is greater or equal than, since x bar is in c1 minus c2, it's certainly greater than the smallest element in this, uh, so, so that the, so it's greater than the, the element y in c1 minus c2, so that this inner product is the smallest. So it's greater or equal than the infimum over y in c1 minus c2. Um, and then you have to replace x bar by y. So you can do these estimations with supremum and infimum by just these estimations here in, in, in the, in the, now in this chain of inequalities we're working on, by just picking one element here and then um, the infimum uh, is, is always the smallest, so it's, it's uh, the, uh, the infimum is the smallest, so it's smaller than any, any element you pick in this set. And accordingly here, for the, as we did for the supremum. Okay, infimum of this, but we already know that this infimum is greater or equal than zero, 
and we have plus epsilon norm a squared. So the infimum of this, as we know, is greater or equal than zero. So what remains is epsilon norm of a squared, and this is greater than zero. Now, going to our chain of equations, supremum of this minus infimum of this is greater than zero. And I should probably draw a line here um, to separate uh, this, the theorem from its proof. Um, yeah, and this is actually what we wanted to prove. So by, by picking these, these two elements in C1 minus C2 and then using the supremum and infimum, we have this second inequality. And this concludes our proof and shows that whenever these conditions are satisfied and C1 minus C2 has non-empty interior, then the sets C1 and C2 are properly separable.